Topping today's news, the much-anticipated opening of the British Colonial Hotel opened today. The latest on the delays to the Gladstone Road Improvement Project, a number of shootings and a murder in the capital on the weekend. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jarino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It is a pleasure to have you join us. The British Colonial Hotel reopened its doors for guests and residents today. The official opening ceremony and ribbon cutting took place at the front door of the newly renovated multi-million dollar resort. Bringing remarks and sharing in the excitement was General Manager Dan McDermott. On this auspicious occasion, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the ownership of CCA whose vision and dedication have breathed new life into this historical gem. Their unwavering commitment to preserving the legacy of the British colonial has been the driving force behind this remarkable transformation. I would also like to express our sincere appreciation to Prime Minister Davis and other government officials for their steadfast support. The belief in the importance of preserving the cultural heritage and boosting tourism has been instrumental in making this renovation a reality. For nearly a century, British Colonial has been interwoven into the fabric of downtown Nassau and is seen as a historical landmark. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, Chester Cooper, called the occasion the rebirth of a historical gem. The revival of this iconic landmark speaks to the resilience of our tourism product and our government's commitment to revitalize downtown. It also signifies a promising new chapter in our journey towards progress and prosperity. It heralds the confidence of our stakeholders and our investors in the economy of the Bahamas. Prime Minister Philip Davis commended all who played a part in the redevelopment of the hotel and expressed pleasure with the number of opportunities the hotel will provide for Bahamians as well as added accommodation for even more tourist arrivals. I offer this glimpse of history because I want us to appreciate how landmark developments such as this are more than just offerings of investments, more than just additions to tourism. This is not to diminish either of those. Major investments, such as the upgrading of the British Colonial Hotel, bring jobs and other opportunities for Bahamians. With record numbers of tourists arriving on our shores, we also desperately need more rooms to accommodate them. Let me offer an example. The introduction of new direct flights from Seattle with Alaska Airlines and from Los Angeles to JetBlue marks a significant milestone in our tourism journey. These new routes signify our expanding reach and the growing interest in the unique allure of the Bahamas. The Hilton now features some 288 rooms, 18,000 square feet of meeting spaces, a fully refurbished lobby area, sparkling outdoor pools and luxurious restaurants, bars, and shopping areas. The opposition calls for the Davis administration to come clean as it concerns an alleged $25 million agreement between cargo management company JDL, which is set to provide cargo x-ray services at the Linden Pendling International Airport. With the opposition alleging in their written statement that there is a January timeline to implement this agreement with JDL. They say the government has given the public no notice and has not said anything about the initiative and who the owners are that will be taking home millions of dollars with seemingly no bid contract. According to the opposition, come January, all Bahamians who use air courier services to import items will face increased charges in addition to already expensive customs processing fees. In the statement, the FNM insists the Davis administration cannot impose a new tax on every single package brought into the country by air with the proceeds going to a private company without bringing the proposal to Parliament for debate. The opposition says it categorically rejects the JDL arrangement and demands that it be 
canceled immediately that any necessary upgrades to the air freight facilities be funded from the fees Bahamians already pay. Former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis first raised the issue in Parliament last week. After taking a brief break from his weekly commentary last Wednesday, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell returned on Friday and immediately took issue with claims by Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard, who was reported in a local daily as saying that Prime Minister Philip Davis was embattled within the PLP. You have to laugh out loud at the headline in The Guardian on Wednesday, 13th of December 2023, with the leader of the opposition, Michael Pintard, trying to deflect from his own problems by saying that the leader of the PLP is embattled. What a joke from a man who can't or won't call a convention of his party, whose party is fighting like cats and dogs out in the streets, whose former Prime Minister, Hubert Minister, refused to support the party's candidate in the West Grand Bahama and Bimini by-election. It's clear who is embattled, and it's not Rave Davis. On the other side, Rave Davis, newly elected, unopposed, got his choice for chairman, with an unassailable majority, presides over the best economy in a generation in this country. Asked about recent calls in the FNM for a convention, Mr. Pintard, who was a guest on Guardian Radio's talk show Z Live with host Zhivago Lang, instead suggested that recent infighting in the FNM is simply a family squabble. Mr. Pintard went on to suggest that the PLP is facing similar internal challenges and that there are those in the party who wish to replace Mr. Davis as leader, largely because they are all allegedly not receiving any contracts. And finally in this segment, several shootings taking place over the weekend with one of the incidents resulting in another adult male killed after an argument and a shooting at a bar on Village Road on Saturday. Police say around 2 a.m., the 24-year-old victim engaged in an argument with another male that started inside the bar and escalated outside where he was shot multiple times by the culprit. The victim was transported to the hospital where he succumbed to his injuries as police are actively investigating this incident, which has resulted in the 99th murder for the year, according to JCN's records. A few hours later, another shooting happening in the early morning hours on Saturday in the Camp Road area, leaving three adult males hospitalized. Police say around 5.30 a.m., the victims were on Cooper's Terrace off Camp Road when the driver of a black vehicle intentionally collided with them and then opened fire in their direction. The first victim, age 20, sustained a gunshot wound to his right leg and suffered injuries as a result of the collision with the vehicle. The second victim, age 20, sustained gunshot wounds to the face and neck and a third victim, age 18, suffered injuries from the collision with the vehicle. All victims were transported to the hospital via a private vehicle where they are undergoing medical treatment. The current condition is unknown at this time. Police are aggressively searching for the suspects in connection with these incidents. And in another shooting incident around 9 p.m. on Saturday, a resident in the Fox Hill area Police say while at home on Roma Street, the victim responded to a call for his name and opened the front door only to meet a masked male armed with a handgun. The culprit opened fire at the victim before escaping the scene. The victim sustained a gunshot wound to the upper torso and was transported to the hospital by ambulance where at last report his condition was stable. Anyone with information about these or any other criminal incidents, you're urged to contact the police. You can call CID at 502-9991. If you want to remain anonymous, you can call Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS, 328-8477, or you can call 911 or 919. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with more news on the other side.